Hey everyone, Mike here. I've been testing the all new 2023 Trek Fuel EXE 8. It's just been launched. It's got everything I loved about the Trek Fuel EXE that was released last year, but now in an alloy frame with a couple of changes that make a really big difference. So click on through below if you want to see all the review details or just sit back and enjoy the ride. So this is the Fuel EXE 8 that I've got on test. It sells for $11,500. It's got the same TQ HPR50 motor that, that the, uh, all the other EXE bikes have, um, but it's got a full aluminium frame. And the big difference on this one, why it costs as much as a carbon bike, is that it's got the new SRAM Transmission GX. So that all new 12 speed group set with the direct mount rear derailleur and the shift mapping across the cassette. And that makes a really big difference. There is a Dior spec EXE with an alloy frame that sells for eight and a half thousand dollars. So that's ripping value to get a, a really well regarded mid power e-bike to get you out on the trails. A lot of stuff remains the same with the with the Trek Fuel EXE, even though it's in aluminium. Uh, you've got, as I said, you've got the same HPR50, so that's the 50 newton meter motor. You've got a 360 watt hour battery. Bike comes in four sizes. It's a 29er. It's got a minnow link. You can set it up mullet if you want. You can run a 160 mil fork instead of a 140 if you like. But one key difference is that it does have headset cups at the front end, which means you can steepen it up by one degree or back it off by one degree. So the carbon frames don't have that, so that may appeal to some people. So in terms of geometry and handling, it is exactly matched to the carbon uh, fuel EXE as I reviewed last year, which means on this large, I've got a 65 degree head angle, um, fork, the 150 mil travel fork runs a 44 mil offset, and it's a 77 degree seat angle uh, to keep you nice and over the pedals. That works out on the large at a 485 mil reach. Bear in mind, there's an extra large up and there's a medium and a small um, down below it. This bike's got 440 mil chainstays, uh, so you can really get a, a nice handling trail platform, um, and you can bump up the fork to 160 mil if you prefer. What you'll also notice is that just like the carbon frame, there's no knock block. The frame's been designed so the forks never hit the down tube. In that place, you've got the TQ unit, which sits nicely into the top tube. In terms of weight, this EXE 8 weighs at 20.41 kilos in large without the pedals on. So it's about two kilos heavier than the Top Dog 9.9 .9 Axis bike that I tested last year, which is about what you'd expect when you're not dealing with a top group set, carbon wheels, carbon cockpit, and the carbon frame. So two kilos to save about almost half price. So all about the drive system. As a refresher, this, uh, the Trek Fuel EXE uses the TQ HPR50 uh, drive, system, drive system and battery. Trek co-launched the EXE with that system last year. So it's the same one that's here. So HPR50, it's in the name. It's got 50 Newton meters. It's got 300 watts of maximum assistance and it has a 360 watt hour battery that's in the down tube. You can remove that one for travel. Uh, it's pretty easy to do so. It weighs about 1.8 kilos, so you can drop that out pretty easily. There is also a 160 watt hour range extender that slots into a battery, uh, into a bottle cage. So if you really want to increase that range, you can. So the TQ system has three dynamic modes that you can have it set in when you're riding. Um, and those are all, all uh, tunable too via the Trek Central app if you want to customize what you're getting out of it. I found that they're pretty good from the get-go. Uh, being a dynamic mode, that means you, if you're not putting much effort in, you're not getting much assistance back, but you kind of get the cadence up and get, get the motor whirring, uh, and you do get that full 300 watts of support. I also really like that one of the screens that you can have on the head unit shows you what output you're doing in watts and what output the motor's doing in watts. So you'll kind of see uh, what you're putting in uh, and therefore what you're able to get out and why it may not, not be giving you you know, the full 300 watts if you're just poodling along. The whole system weighs 3,900 grams for the motor and the battery, and it's pretty much 50-50 between the motor and the battery where the weight comes from. So that's actually total weight is the same as most 750 watt hour batteries in a, in a full power system. So that's why the bikes are substantially lighter uh, because they are drawing less battery charge as well. They don't need the bigger battery and it does help keep the total weight down. In terms of runtime that you'll get, it really depends how you're going to ride the bike, just the same as any other e-bike. I found last year on the carbon model, I was getting up to about 
four hours ride time at a maximum because I was using a lot of the low power and mid and very rarely using the high power assistance. This time I'm actually using the mid to high a little bit more. Maybe it's just the trails that I'm riding. So it's easy enough to get two and a half hours of riding out of this system, but you can really map that by how you're using the different modes. If you are erring more towards the low power and, and the mid, mid setting, then you will get that longer, longer run time. Charge time's about two hours for the whole system. So it's pretty quick if you are you know, using it daily or even using it in the morning and again in the afternoon on the weekend. One thing that's all new with this, and you might have noticed is there's a cable coming out of that GX transmission rear mech. And that's because it's running off the bike's battery. I think this is a huge win because it's one less thing to charge. Uh, and it's also a really secure connection being corded in there. Uh, it does mean that if you want to run the bike without the battery in it, you'll just have to pop a battery on the rear mech instead. There's no massive convenience if that's what you're wanting to do. Um, but you know, the charge that the rear mech makes has no, no impact on, on the ride time that you're going to get out of the e-bike because that battery is just so big compared to a rear derailleur mech. So I like that innovation, less things to charge, less things to forget to do, uh, just more time on the trails. Okay, so this is the Trek Central app um, connected to the e-bike here. Got a lot of, lot of details on there. So I've got 81% battery left, gives me my uh, expect, expected range. I can do that through the system anyway. Where it really helps is things like tuning the motor. I don't really want to go over the basics at the moment, but you can choose what your maximum power is going to get on Eco. So you choose the, the mode that you've got there, what the assistance feels like, and the pedal response. So if you want it to really kind of be super snappy, you can do that. Um, and obviously you can do this to each of the modes. Now obviously high is just like full noise on everything. So there's not really much point making everything else full noise, but if you really want to go, hang on, I want a little bit more out of Eco, uh, I can go, all right, I want to get a little bit more power there. I want a little bit more assistance. Um, and really I just want a faster response. You can do that. It's still um, going to be more economical the mid, you can see the uh, suggested range is less, but maybe it's gonna just do exactly what you want. So that's up to you. I think Trek have done a really good job uh, setting them from, from the factory, but up to you if you want a little bit more. Because this is the Trek Central app, you can also get your setup suggestions here. So I entered my uh, height and riding weight uh, into the app when I set it up. So it'll give you your tire pressures and your shock pressure and obviously you get a little bit of feedback here on what your, what your rebound damping should be as well. So it's good to get some baselines there. I'd recommend that you take note of that and see if you need to change it for your own, for your own settings. So with the navigation function, I even like that you can get a visual look of what your range that you've got left is gonna, where, where it can take you. So I can see just about get, get out of Brisbane with what, I've, with what charge I've got left using in the high assistance. Obviously, obviously this changes wherever you are and whatever assistance you're using. So this Fuel EXE 8 has also been launched at the exact same time as SRAM's GX transmission group set. So you've probably seen uh, the transmission group sets come out in March. A lot of the same tech is here, just it's going to be at a slightly cheaper price point, which is why you see it on this e-bike at $11,500. And I really loved how the EXE I tested last year rode, but I really think this 12-speed transmission group set does add to that it really stiffens up the shifting. So you've probably seen that the rear derailleur attaches direct using um, the universal derailleur hanger mounting system that SRAM brought out to market a few years back. It is a lot stiffer under load and that's where a lot of shifting precision comes from. It also really assists with setup because there's no uh, B-tension or limit screws to get right. But I think where the real magic is, is the shift mapping that SRAM have done across the, uh, across the cassette. So that's with shift ramps, similar to what Shimano did with Hyperglide Plus for their 12 speed um, mountain bike group sets. Basically, it really helps move the chain across the cassette under load. The ratio is a little bit different as well. So although it's still 10 to 52, um, the jumps between them, especially in the low gear, low gears, sorry, uh, a, a little bit better. Um, but what I found, even with the extra power and the extra weight of an e-bike, the shifting is just unparalleled. Uh, under load, it is so smooth that you do actually need to check whether you have shifted, especially when moving to a lower gear. So 
I think while the electronic shifting that SRAM had was good, the process was the same as it was with mechanical. Whereas this, because it's such a, such a stiffer system and the chain moves across the cassette so securely, it is a very refined shift and probably the best on the market at the moment. So SRAM's new shifter that they brought out with um, the transmission group sets is hyper adjustable. So you can have it inboard and outboard, you can have it moved around the bars and you can change the position of this pod here. Um, I kind of like that it's got the tactile buttons. I did spend a lot of time stopping and starting on my first few rides, getting the positioning just right. But the thing is you can do that. There are positions to get that. The only thing is if you don't like it, you're actually, you know, you're not stuck with it. It'll be backward compatible with any other of the axis shifters. So if you prefer the original one, you can swap it out and put that on. And I think it's a good move by SRAM to do that because some of their other parts such as the new cassette aren't backwards compatible, but the shifter is so you can get your ergonomics just right. For the rest of the parts kit, it's pretty straightforward. Got a Fox 36 rhythm on the front, which is 150 mil fork. Um, it's got the grip damper in it. So it's a fairly simple damper. It does work really well. You don't have lots of Fox upgrades you can make to it if you wanted to upgrade that down the track, but there are some aftermarket options. Then you've got a Floatex Performance rear shock on the back. So a fair bit of adjustment there too, plus a climb switch uh, if you need that efficiency. I've barely touched it because the bike pedals really well anyway. SRAM do their DB8 brakes with big 200 mil rotors. They've been fantastic. And then Bontrager look after the rest of the build from the line comp wheels with 30 mil internal, uh, big beefy tires, uh, and then alloy cockpit and 170 mil drop and post. So the big question, how does it ride? Well, in general, it rides just like the Fuel EXE that I rode last year, with a few, a few differences. So I got along really well with the Fuel EXE last year. It was just under 18 and a half kilos. Uh, it was a real intuitive feel when riding it from the TQ system, um, and I loved it. It was a very difficult e-bike to give back when, when I was finished reviewing it. This bike, in essence, is the same. It's got the same system. It's got the same suspension platform. The geometry is just the same. I, I feel really at one with the handling of this bike, but it's a bit different being a couple of kilos heavier. Um, I do find that I am kind of erring towards using the higher power settings and therefore not getting the range that I was getting on the carbon bike. I couldn't say whether that's just because I'm preferring to ride a bike with a little bit more punch at the moment when I'm out on an e-bike, but regardless, I'm still having a blast riding trails on this and I really enjoy the handling that it's got. So this year I've got a Trek Fuel EX8 as a long-term trail test bike. And so in a way, this is just a e-bike version of that bike. So the geometry is pretty much uh, matched between the two very closely. And the reason I picked the EX8 as a long-term test bike is I found as a 150-140-29er that, that can go mullet, that has uh, um, headset adjustments, has the minnow link, which is where Trek let you adjust really easily just to change the head angle, seat angle, um, bottom bracket height. Um, and the fact it can, be, it can be mullet and be longer travel. It's a super versatile trail bike. All those features are here on this mid-power e-bike. And so I think all of a sudden Trek have got an even more versatile e-bike in the market with that TQ motor system in there, having a little bit more adjustment than the carbon models. And because you can start get these at $8,500 for the Dior Equipped model, you get a really versatile bike that more than likely is gonna ride how you want it to ride once you've got it set up. But as, as stock, I really like it for my local trails around Brisbane. I don't find that there's anything where it holds me back as a, with a 150 mil fork on the front and 140 on the back end. Found the trails around Greater Brisbane are fantastic. As mentioned, it does have a climb switch on the, on the Fox Shock, but I've found for pedaling back up or even technical single track climbs, I've just left it open. Once I've got the pressure set up how I wanted, it's exactly what I needed. I've also really benefited from the longer dropper post. It is 170, I've still got a bit there. I actually wonder about running a longer dropper post, but with the length of the bike and the stability, thanks to the 65 degree head angle, which is stock where I'm running it, uh, I found it's a super confident descender and it's not holding me back from anything that I want to, want to do on the trails. In terms of pedal response from the TQ system, it's really good. It doesn't have that punch of a full power system. So you get the 50 Newton meters of torque and a 300 watts maximum assistance. 
Now with the new Bosch SX uh, mid power system, you've got 55 Newton meters of torque and up to 600 watts of assistance at very high cadences. Um, we haven't ridden that yet, so I can't say how that feels, but I can imagine that's gonna be a completely different riding sensation, matching some of that full power e-bike pep that you get with the mid, mid power system weight. As it is, I still think the TQ system on the Fuel EXE bridges that gap between people who want a regular riding trail bike and an e-bike. So it's not sit back and pedal and just enjoy the, you know, get taken along for the ride like you might may get from a full power system. It gives you the support you want with plenty of punch to keep you fresher for the descents. And I think for a lot of people, that's what they're looking at uh, when they're looking for a, for a new e-bike, which doesn't kind of uh, reshape the way that they ride. So my take on this bike is it's subtle changes with a brand new group set. I like that Trek have added two more options, pricing options into the range here. So they had the three carbon EXE models before, and now they've got a alloy Dior model for 8,500. And then you've got for $11,500, you've got the alloy model with the transmission GX group set. So if you prefer the alloy frame, and if you want that headset adjustment, you've got those options there but if you want the carbon frame and dropping, you know, about a kilo or more, depending on the spec, um, then you've got those options too, running up to about $13,500. None of these prices are small amounts of money, but it is a highly refined e-bike and take the motor out, it's a still a really, really refined trail bike as well. So uh, kudos to Trek for integrating a very smart and low weight uh, motor, motor system in there with the TQ HPR50 into a really, fantastic riding trail bike that can be just about whatever you want, whether you want to bump up the fork travel, uh, run it as a mullet or adjust the suspension. Uh, there really is something for almost anybody if they're after a mid-power e-bike with the Trek Fuel EXE range. So if you want any more details on the Trek Fuel EXE platform, the TQ HPR50 uh, motor, battery and system, um, then check through to the review that I did last year. Otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe so you get every single one of our video reviews.